Today I am driving the quickest series production car in the world, the Rimac Nevera. This one here is an all-electric vehicle, four electric motors, one per axle and almost 2,000 horsepower and we will floor it out on the German Autobahn with Thomas Nautikofühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go here with the design which is, yes, hypercar, but they didn't want to make it too much screaming out. They want to say, hey, we do this EV revolution in hypercars, the first electric hypercar, and then they don't want to be too loud, but of course here a lot of carbon fiber use and so on. A lot of customization is also possible as for colors and so on. And a relatively normal slim integration of the data I'm running like right here. Launch control, guys. <laughs> that was 100. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour in under two seconds and zero to 300 kilometers an hour in under 10 seconds. Of course, amazing facts here, great aerodynamics and of course the raw power of these motors here. More power always at the rear axle and they have also this interesting design and aerodynamic detail here. This is reminding of a Croatian necktie actually, very interesting. More carbon fiber use, 20 inch wheels, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires equal tires that we also recently used on Tesla model S Plaid. Also do some comparison to that. Carbon ceramic brakes to also get control of this one, but they are also using the recuperation pretty much. Well, you see this really, really low profile. Looking forward to the seating position very soon. And they also have active aerodynamics. For example, the rear wing is lifting up in track mode, giving you more downforce. The quarter mile time is 8.6 seconds. Really impressive. Power is stored in a 120 kilowatt hour battery and they also have great fast charging technology up to 500 kilowatt. Well, no charging station can cope with that pricing. It's about 2 million euros. You can still get one, that's the good news. And you basically pay per development hour because 1.6 million hours of development time went into this vehicle. Even here the front aerodynamics, they change when I go to the track mode, for example. There's even a downforce braking, by the way, possible. And when you change the driving mode, you can also activate these outside LEDs. And then when you switch to a different driving mode, then it also shows here on the outside. Now, for example, I'm in the track mode. And here on the key fob, you can, for example, also show your country flag here, for example, in, well, when there's a German race driver on board. <laughs> Top speed is 412 kilometers an hour or 256 miles per hour. That's of course more than anything we've ever experienced. Let's see how fast we can get it to go on the German Autobahn today. Then to the interior here, you open these wing doors. We always have some public <laughs> fans if they are shooting in the background, maybe you see it. Full Alcantara interior because Marta Rimac, he's also an animal friend and he wants no animal cruelty in the interior. And of course, it's a good racing material holds everything tight while driving and good grip on the steering wheel. More a minimalistic design, but this vehicle here was developed by petrol heads. You can see that in the interior because we have also a lot of physical controls. For example, to put in the gears, we have the turning lever right here, left next to the steering wheel and more in the central part. First of all, seating position, well, with 189 or six for two, it gets close. Um, yeah, the door can close above my head when I have like this space above my head left. Um, it's not an ideal seating position for me. So for tall people, not that good ergonomics of the seats. I already talked to the, um, the deaf guys and they said they will offer more different seats in the future and also maybe for future cars. You know that they also now partially own Bugatti. And so the future Bugatti cars will also have a lot in common technology side what we see here today. This interior really welcomes you, I have to say. Yeah, besides of the not ideal seating position for me, I think it's really cool that we have even more physical dials here. For example, for the window levers here in the center console, this you know, airplane cockpit style. This here is a dial where you can change the front and rear electric motor output. You can really vary it in a, in a you know, prefer, preferred driving mode. You can set different driving modes for yourself or you can work with these presets like cruise, sport, track. Interesting that we have some storage space here behind this screen. You just fold it forward and then I can store my sunglasses there, for example. <laughs> That's funny, right? And in this screen here, everything is developed for them, actually by them. So you basically find no other part in this vehicle which has something in common with any other brand. That's very interesting. And 
it's not too complicated. Apple CarPlay and Auto will come at a later stage. And here, for example, at the screen, you um, change the temperature and so on. Um, not the most intuitive thing, but to me, the most important thing is that you have the driving modes in control with physical dials. And if you wonder, yes, it also has a car internal GPS and it's actually pretty responsive. On the steering wheel, you have turning indicators left and right, physical, and then here the digital instruments. There you can see different stats, for example, here also, yeah, when we floor it out on the autobahn, 46 kilowatt hours more kilometers, yeah, that's double a usual <laughs> consumption. You also get a passenger screen that your passenger can check the incredible speed while driving. Charging flap, by the way, is right here to open it. Floor it now. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the Rematz Nevera. Wow. We had ESC off and in track mode and I was flooring it, going out of the corner and the car was incredibly quick. But at the same time, it was very well controllable. So, yeah, first surprise is this is so planted on the road. It feels like I'm really like sticking to the road. And of course, since we're here in Germany today, We'll do a German Autobahn test, a proper German Autobahn test here for you. Let's go right here. <laughs> ah, I have Goran next to me, by the way. He's a test driver for Remats, also a good friend of Mate. And I heard you blew up that BMW engine once, right? Yeah, yeah, that so was that, me. <laughs> that was him, yeah. So let's, we are at 100 kilometers an hour and let's go. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't. I can't even announce the speed. Oh my God! This is like. I'm not even sure if I'm in, if I'm in the in the vehicle right now. And it doesn't even feel like we're going 200 or something. And I mean, I'm just slightly on the throttle, and there's always still the reaction. The reaction is always still there, like here. Oh my God! It's like 260. That was a 200 to 260 acceleration. Wow. I think I don't even need a back mirror here because it's not possible that anything can come from behind. Maybe if there's like, I don't know, Formula One car testing on the autobahn or something. Yeah, I think they, they, won't, they won't catch us. They won't catch us. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's a fun fact from... Oh my God. From 200 to 250. This is crazy. You need under two seconds. 200 to... Yeah, wow. 200 to 300, it's under five seconds. Well, at the same time, I, I have to say, I feel relatively safe in here. I mean, we have this monocoque, and but the car feels so planned, and the suspension is actually not too uncomfortable. So it's really evening out everything very well. So although we have here track mode and everything, it's really well controllable. So you feel the great handling of the vehicle. Also, when I turn it, I am, it's really interesting to see when you look behind. So this is like cruise mode, then the wing goes down and everything's more a little bit calmer and so on, and the throttle input, like when I floor it here now, it's super quick, yes, but it's not that your eyes will get, you know, through your brain, but when I go to the track mode, the wing lifts, and when I hit the throttle then, <laughs> you, you, you can't even cope, you know, how fast this is going, and this is an acceleration you would maybe experience from standstill in some other electric vehicles, and here, it's going when you're already at 200 kilometers an hour and it's still going and going and going. Wow. Yeah, that's really incredible. And, and, and I have to say, like, the last time I did something, you know, closely relatable to that was a Tesla Model S Plaid, also on, on, the, on the racetrack. But you have to say the big difference is that, yeah, you have, of course, even more acceleration. But the main difference is that this car feels so much safer because of this whole architecture and it has just traction, you know, it's, it's nonsense traction, <laughs> so to speak. I, I really could feel I could just slalom through all these vehicles and it wouldn't be even dangerous. Well, of course we won't do that here on public roads, but you really feel when driving this vehicle that you can do anything with it. So uh, was this also something that you were looking for in, in development? That's like 
or so, the idea of the controls in the vehicle was to make the car friendly to everybody. So you have 2,000 horsepower every day friendly for everybody to drive, even on the wet surface. The most impressive part is when the road is wet, when you have no friction, then you can feel the controls how they work. Yeah. If you want to turn it off, you turn it off. Yeah. So basically yeah. there's a, oh. as we call it, you know, mode for everybody. You can do everything uh. pretty fine or you can do something for yourself. So I'm not sure if you got him on, on, on the microphone, but he said actually that they want to develop the car for everybody, that even if you are not like super, super skilled driver, you are safe, although you have two almost 2,000 horsepower, and I have to say, this really works well. Wow. Yeah, I mean, of course it's also quite loud here now, because the speeds are just super high, and I really have to say, I never felt that safe and that controlled in a vehicle with that amount of horsepower and with that amount of, of raw speed. And one more time, even quicker, 260, whoa. Woo. <laughs> it goes so quick, just checking out between the vehicles and I'm always ready. Yeah. But even the battery temperature I've seen in here on the gauge, it's like 38 degrees Celsius, so it's extremely cold in comparison to what I'm actually doing here all the time. Oh my god, it's like, this is crazy. 300 kilometers an hour, whoa! 320. Whoa, oh my god. You hit the brakes. Whoa. Breaking from 320. Oh. And it, the, the, the crazy thing is you like... You saw the arrow in the back? No, I didn't watch it. <laughs> wow. Oh my god, I got get off here? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. it's here actually, sorry. Whoa, and yeah, the other crazy thing is like, the same way, you know, like that the time it takes to reach this kind of acceleration, this kind of speed, was now at 300 kilometers an hour. At the same time, you also go back to zero, basically. That is I mean, just amazing. Here, by the way, guys, in the roundabout, here's some countryside roads and so on. It's like, I mean, I can drive it basically at full speed. This, this like, with the torque vectoring, we have one electric motor per wheel. And this helps you so much to get in the car and get out again. It's like you don't even feel the need to get off the accelerator pedal there. And some remarks to city driving here at the moment now in cruise mode. And then everything is set basically on a more drivable scenario. So suspension is a little bit softer and steering input also really light. And it's actually surprisingly comfortable for a hypercar. Of course, seating position is not ideal for my height, told it earlier. Um, but overall, you can get along in city driving. Of course, the view is always limited with these vehicles. When you look around and, and so on, you don't see too much. But also, just in the city traffic, changing the lane and so on, and driving at the slow speed is actually fun. Of course, here then at slower speeds, you feel even more how go-kart-ish this vehicle is. And everything we hear, actually, is just natural sound. There's no sound emulation here, as we know from other EVs and so on. I think it's also fine to go with this decision. So my key finding for today is it has so much power, but it is so well controllable. So on the one hand, this is the most extreme car I've ever driven. But on the other hand, I still felt so safe while driving it and I had the greatest handling control. This is the key thing about this vehicle. You can basically floor it out at all times, but you're still in control and you're still safe. So track-wise, like a 718 Boxster or Cayman, this is what comes close to it from the, like the handling, how well it is in handling. But of course, acceleration-wise, yeah. The only thing that came close to that was the tester flat recently, or you can also tune in to more supercar content. And of course, we'll keep you updated here with the story of Rimats and Bugatti.